Hello and welcome to fresh new edition of your favorite program Science Monitor, a program that keeps you updated on all that is happening in the world of science and technology. First, let us take a look at the headlines. National Health Profile of 2013 released in the National Capital. India gets its first indigenously built research ship, Sindhu Sadhna. Unique communication system prepared by the scientists for emergencies. Scientists successful in preparing first anti-dengue vaccine. 248 new species of animals discovered in India in the year 2013. And in our segment in depth, we look at special highlights of budget 2014-15 in the context of science and technology. And now news in details. Union Minister of Health and Family Welfare Dr. Harshwardhan recently launched the National Health Profile of the Year 2013. Union Minister for Health and Family Welfare Dr. Harshwardhan on 17th July released the 9th edition of the National Health Profile. The National Health Profile for the year 2013 is a comprehensive compilation of health data in the country for 2013 along with information on health infrastructure and human resources in the field. The National Health Profile is documented by the Central Bureau of Health Intelligence. It covers demographic, socio-economic, health status and health finance indicators of the country. CBHI has been publishing National Health Profile every year since 2005. Speaking on the occasion, Dr. Harshwarthan stressed on the need of reliable country-wise data in all sectors of healthcare to enable policymakers to make informed decisions and effectively implement various schemes. Emphasizing on making health for all a social movement, Dr. Hashwardhan also stated that the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare will work in close coordination with the Center for Disease Control, CDC, Atlanta, USA, in healthcare sector. Secretary Health, Sri Love Verma, DGHS, Dr. Jagdish Prasad, Secretary Department of AIDS Control, Sri Suburaj, Secretary Ayush, Sri Nilanjan Sanyal, DGICMR, Dr. B.M. Katoch, Director CHBI, Dr. Madhu Raikwar, and many senior officers of the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare and CBHI were also present during the function. The nation's maiden indigenously built research ship Sindhu Sadhna was recently launched and dedicated to the nation. The vessel will do research in the field of oceanography. The working of the vessel will be the responsibility of CSIR National Institute of Oceanography, Goa. Dr. Jitendra Singh, Minister of State of Department of Science and Technology, Independent Charge, dedicated to the nation the first ever indigenously built research vessel Sindhu Sadhana. The ship Sindhu Sadhana, acquired recently by the CSIR's National Institute of Oceanography, was dedicated to the nation in a ceremony held at the Marmugao Harbour of Goa on 13 July. Sindhu Sadhana is a multidisciplinary research vessel equipped with a number of laboratories for data collection, echo sounders, acoustic Doppler profiler, autonomous weather station, air quality monitors, etc. The ship is also equipped with a host of other world-class technologies that can support ocean research by making multidisciplinary observations. The ship is expected to aid the prediction of future changes in oceanographic processes and generate quality data. Such inputs will benefit not only India, but also the number of other nations and seas around India. With Sindhu Sadhana becoming functional in the oceans of India, not only will mark the opening of a new chapter, but also will open up huge, large vistas of research, forecasts, oceanography, and thereby also place us in a position for international collaborations in a bigger way. As India marches ahead to become a world power in the next one decade, initiatives like Sindhu Sadhana will also help an economic breakthrough in the areas of shipping, fishing, exploration for oil and natural gas, submarine pipelines, etc. It has been observed that during the time of emergencies, different modes of communication which are the need of the hour often break down. 
Recently, scientists at IIT have, with the help of a balloon, developed a transmitter that can be installed within an hour and offer unmitigated communication channels to the rescue teams. The system is helpful when mobile network connectivity is either jammed or unavailable due to natural calamities. To know more about balloon transmitter, let us see this report. Indian Institute of Technology Madras on 10th July demonstrated its new multi-way communication system for post-disaster relief communication. This rapidly deployable, independent, low-cost communication system aims to enable relief workers to communicate with the relief manager through voice, images and videos. The system uses a balloon-mounted transmitter that can reach distances as far as 20 km from the disaster relief site and has been built using the GSM, Wi-Fi and 4G LTE systems with a helium balloon for both range and bandwidth. This technology will eliminate the need to transport heavy metal towers. IIT Madras has designed this under the Information Network for Natural Disaster Mitigation and Recovery or DesaNet program in collaboration with Kio University under the Framework of Science and Technology Research Partnership for Sustainable Development, SATREPS. The DesaNet project that was initiated in 2010 is a solo Japanese collaboration program for disaster relief and mitigation. The project aims to collect important data on earthquake and weather using global information network. It uses India and Japan as example cases and tries to develop technical basis for rescue and disaster. Typically what happens is whenever a disaster happens, everybody tries to make phone calls because they are anxious about reaching their uh, friends and relatives and their friends and relatives are anxious to reach the victims. So the number of calls made suddenly goes up and this creates congestion in the network and the congestion is so bad even the legitimate relief operation also cannot take place. So we have designed a communication system that addresses many of these problems right. and for this some ideas we borrowed from the existing Japanese system. Under DesaNet, more than 30 researchers in India and Japan jointly make four groups to research earthquake disaster mitigation, a weather monitoring platform, sustainable communication infrastructure and an ICT platform and resource development for emergency and disaster mitigation. Collaborators on the project are Kyo Universities, the University of Tokyo, Nara Institute of Science and Technology, NIST, and Hiroshima University from Japan. Indian Institute of Technology Hyderabad, National Geophysical Research Institute Hyderabad, Indian Meteorological Department, Indian Institute of Technology Madras, Indian Institute of Technology Kanpur and International Institute of Information Technology Hyderabad from India. Scientists have succeeded in preparing the first anti-dengue vaccine. This vaccine has been prepared by a French company. According to WHO estimates, 10 crore people are affected by dengue every year worldwide. That is why this vaccine is seen as a major breakthrough in the field of medicine. As a major step towards ensuring healthcare regimen against tropical diseases, the French pharmaceutical company Sanofi Pasteur has published the results of their successful phase 3 clinical trial of new dengue vaccine in Asia. The vaccine called CYD-TDV showed an efficacy of 56.5% against dengue infections in children aged 2 to 14. The trial involved 10,275 healthy children aged 2 to 14 across 5 countries in Asia. The trial also showed that the vaccine reduced the number of severe dengue cases by 88.5%. Dengue also known as breakbone fever is an endemic in many parts of the world and it is estimated that about 100 million people fall ill annually killing about 20,000 people each year. This newly developed vaccine is expected to have a significant impact on public health. The vaccine so far is known to be safe and has no side effects and is expected to reduce 50% of the world's dengue infections. However, there are also some serious concerns that surround the vaccine. Though the vaccine was expected to show more than 90% efficacy, it showed only 56.5%. Also, it is important to note that there are four subtypes of the dengue called serotype 1, 2, 3 and 4. 
while Sanofi Pasteur's new vaccine protects quite well against serotypes 3 and 4 with an efficacy of 75%. Protection against serotype 1 is only 50% while against serotype 2, which is the most frequent Degu type, is only 35% effective. The Zoological Survey of India has discovered 248 new animal species in different parts of the country in 2013. Of them, 162 are insects, 19 are arachnids, 36 are fish, 5 are amphibians and 2 are reptiles. A compilation of these discoveries was published a few weeks ago in a volume titled Animal Discoveries 2013. Take a look. India has always been home to large biodiversity. Adding to its rich resources, the Zoological Survey of India discovered 248 new animal species in different parts of the country in 2013. The newly discovered species include 162 new species of insects, 19 arachnids, 36 types of fish, 5 amphibians and 2 types of reptiles. The species are extremely rare and most of them are endangered. The study conducted under the leadership of Dr. Venkatraman, Director of Zoological Survey of India, identifies the Western Ghats and Eastern Himalayas as biological hotspots harboring many undiscovered species of flora and fauna. According to the researchers, among these new discoveries, the most interesting is a shield-tailed snake. Named as Rhinophis gaueri, it is found in the Boda Malai hills of Tamil Nadu. Of the five species of amphibians, two are from Arunachal Pradesh, one from Meghalaya, one from Eastern Ghats and one from the Western Ghats of Maharashtra. The frog found in the Western Ghats in Maharashtra, Rauchester's ghatei, is a new species of shrub frog which inhabits semi-evergreen forests and scrub patches. Of the 36 species of fish, at least 18 are found in the northeastern states, 4 in West Bengal and 8 in Kerala. Scientists at the ZSI have also spotted 54 new animal species for the first time in India, previously reported in different parts of the world. It is interesting to note that of the 1.4 million animal species that had been found across the world till December 2013, India is home to over 96,000 species. This means India harbors 7% of world's animal population. Time to take a very short break here. We'll be back with more science news. So stay tuned. Now our next segment, Science Express, shall take you through an exciting journey that will show you some other scientific activities across the country and the world. In a written reply to a question raised in the parliament on the status of pollution in the country, Environment Minister Sri Prakash Javadekar stated that a total of about 150 rivers across the country are known to be polluted currently. The state of Maharashtra tops the list with 28 rivers adversely affected by pollution. While the state of Gujarat holds the second place with 19 polluted rivers, Uttar Pradesh comes third with a total of 12 rivers. The list of polluted rivers include 11 rivers from Karnataka, 9 rivers each from Madhya Pradesh, Andhra Pradesh and Tamil Nadu, 5 rivers from Rajasthan and 3 rivers from the state of Jharkhand and Himachal Pradesh. The only river that flows through Delhi, the river Yamuna also comes under the polluted category of rivers. In order to improve the access to portable water, the National Institute of Ocean Technology, Earth System Science Organization has now come up with an indigenous desalination technology for converting seawater into portable water. This technology, particularly suitable for areas like Lakshadweep, is based on low temperature thermal desalination. So far, three such desalination plants with capacity of 1 lakh litre of portable water per day have been commissioned in the country. One each at Kavarati, Minikoy and Agathi Islands of Lakshadweep. Work has been initiated to set up a prototype LTTD plant with the capacity of generating 2 million litres of portable water per day at the Tuthi Koren Thermal Power Station, Tamil Nadu. Expressing serious concern over poaching of rhinos in Assam's Manas Wildlife Sanctuary, the UNESCO World Heritage Committee in its 38th session held in Doha has warned India of including the wildlife reserve in the list of world heritage in danger if it failed to check poaching and encroachment in the forest. The UNESCO during the meet also asked India to ensure that forest guards were adequately equipped and trained to protect the forest resources against poachers and maintain effective patrolling to secure the recovering population of rhinos and other wildlife. 
A recent study by the researchers of University of Chicago suggests that some shark species may possess the ability to adapt to climate change. The findings come from the studies conducted on teeth of sharks that lived in warm Arctic waters millions of years ago. The results suggest that some shark species have the mechanism to cope up with the fall of salinity caused by increase in sea temperature. This is an important implication in the context of rising concerns regarding the effect of climate change on survival of different species. The newly elected Indian government laid out its plans for the country in its 2014-15 budget last week. So, how has this year's budget fared in the context of field of science and technology and what special schemes have been announced for the same? Let us find out in our segment In Focus. Clean water, biotechnology and higher education form the theme of the newly elected government's 2014-15 budget for research in science and technology that was launched on 10th July. Among the fears that science and technology might see a cost cutting this time, researchers were relieved to see a small increase in overall funding. Two new agricultural biotechnology research hubs, a national center for Himalayan studies, huge solar power plants and canal side solar parks that will each produce 1 megawatt of electricity forms the focal theme of the 2014-15 budget. According to the budget, about Rs 35.44 billion Indian rupees have been earmarked for the Department of Science and Technology. This is a hike of 11% over last year's allocation of 31.84 billion rupees. The Department of Biotechnology has been allocated 15.17 billion rupees, which is an increase of 1% over last year. The government has proposed the strengthening of leading areas like nanotechnology, material science and biomedical device technology through public-private partnership programs. Officials assure that the funding would also be used to translate high-quality research funded by DST into entrepreneurships. The proposed budget also aims to scale up the biotechnology sector in the country by funding biotech clusters in the cities of Bangalore and Faridabad, along with turning the International Center for Genetic Engineering and Biotechnology into a world leader in life sciences. Focusing on strengthening renewable energy resources, a budget of 158.4 million US dollars has been allocated for the Ministry of Renewable Energy. Also, 16.6 million US dollars have been allocated to promote a national adaptation plan to promote renewable energy. A budget of 83.07 million dollars has been allocated for solar power plants in the states of Gujarat, Rajasthan, Tamil Nadu and the Ladakh region of Jammu and Kashmir. Renewable sector also has been provided with many duty exemptions. Under this scheme, solar, wind and biomass energy projects will now be exempt from some tax levied on the import of raw materials. Funds have also been allocated for 1 megawatt solar parks on the banks of irrigation canals. The new budget also emphasizes on water resources. About $340 million are proposed to be spent on a massive effort to tackle pollution in the river Ganga. India is also embarking on a $168 billion national river linking project that envisages constructing more than 15,000 kilometers of canals and tunnels to shunt water to parched areas of the country. Government also allocated $16.6 million in the coming year for preparatory work. The new budget also provides a 0.9% hike in healthcare research and 6.5% rise in the space and atomic energy sector. And what has been this week's contribution to the history of science? Let us find out in our segment, History of Science. On 19th July 1938, Jayant V. Narlikar was born in Kolhapur, Maharashtra. He educated from Banaras and completed his PhD in 1960 from Cambridge University. He is an Indian theoretical astrophysicist who worked on helium and light isotopes. He worked with Fred Hoyle and Geoffrey Burbage on quasi-steady state theory. Nalikar established Inter-University Centre for Astronomy and Astrophysics in Pune and served as its founder director from 1988 to 2003. He is also known for his popular science and science fiction writing. He co-received UNESCO's Kalinga Prize for popularization of science in 1996. 
On 20th July 1933, Roddam Narsimha was born in Bangalore, Karnataka. He graduated in engineering from Mysore University. He worked on fields like turbulence, boundary layer transitions, structure of shocks, meteorology and design. He is remembered for his contributions in fluid mechanics. In 1984, he was appointed as the director of National Aeronautical Laboratory, Bangalore. After his retirement, he served as the director of National Institute of Advanced Studies and Jawaharlal Nehru Center for Advanced Scientific Research, Bangalore. On 21st July 1969, astronauts Neil Armstrong and Edwin E. Aldrin put their first step on the moon. Reaching in Apollo 11, they landed on the moon in lunar module, popularly known as the Eagle. They became the first men from Earth to walk on the surface of moon. They roamed, jumped and examined the atmosphere of the place. They spent three hours on the surface collecting samples of rocks, setting up scientific equipment for tests and taking photographs. They also left a message on the surface, the footprints of the astronauts and the messages will always remain the same. The first step on moon was described by Neil Armstrong as a giant leap for the mankind. On 25th July 1978, first test tube baby was born in Oldham, England. The baby girl born was named Louise Joy Brown. She was conceived through the technique of in vitro fertilization or IVF. In this technique, the embryo is fertilized in laboratory setup outside the womb. This technique was pioneered by Robert Edwards of Cambridge University, who aimed at increasing the fertility in female human beings. In 1968, Edwards succeeded in fertilizing human ova outside the womb, which led to the birth of the first test tube baby. So how do you like our program Science Monitor? Well, do send in your comments and suggestions through email. Our email address is news at vigyanprasar.gov.in or you can also send us your suggestions by post. Our postal address is Vigyan Prasar C24, Kutub Institutional Area, New Delhi 110016. That is all in today's edition of Science Monitor. We shall meet next week with more dosage of science news and lots of other exciting information. Till then, goodbye and take care.